Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, to the cosmos, to our higher selves, to the planet consciousness, to all these bigger than us things that we could be tapping into for insight, information, direction, inspired action, and, and all the goodness. And I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I love having these conversations. I love to hear people's journeys with the divine and with the understanding of who they are. And I love to guide people along that journey as well, whether they're just beginning and starting out and, you know, like, I don't even know how to do this thing called connect with my soul, um, all the way up to like, hey, I've been doing this a really long time and it's not gelling. It's not like connecting it. And I, how do I do that thing called integration? And so I love that. I love all aspects of this. I, I swim in deep waters. Um, so, and I'm learning how to swim to the shore and stand up on the ground, on the uh, sand, you know, <laughs> so I can meet people where they are. But anyway, I have a wonderful guest on the show today, uh, Karen Maloney, who is from Ireland. I love mm -hmm. Ireland. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to be joining. Yeah, really excited to have you. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Karen. Um, she is a high vibrational, soulful individual full of gratitude, compassion, love and light and fun and curiosity. Karen works as a women's empowerment coach, speaker, energy practitioner, soul guide and host of the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast, which I also am going to be appearing on very soon. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. On her own journey, she has experienced that in order to truly liberate ourselves, step into our light and live our life purpose, we need to turn inwards. We need to learn to take responsibility for ourselves and become the conscious observers of our lives. We need to transcend our limited thinking, accept and move through experiences sent our way and cultivate a kind, caring, loving, supportive and nurturing relationship with ourselves. And this in fact is waking up. And so Karen has always been highly intuitive. We're going to hear more about her story. And this path, you know, is like her soul journey. This is what she's here to do. And she's here to be in service to other women and help them get on their awakening path so we can have the magic happen. I think we all are ready for the magic. It's been a little challenging on planet Earth as of late. And I think we're all ready for the magic. So bring us some magic, Karen. Tell us your inspirational story of waking up to you. Tell us more. Wow. Um, it's so funny, you know, when you hear that back again, because I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me. And that's been my path. And that's been my journey. And that's my vibe and what I'm about and helping others. And, you know, it has been my experience in going inwards and removing all the crap and the limits and the conditioning and the, the bullshit, for want of a better word, that I have fully stepped into my power and kind of shine my light. But it's so funny as well, when I hear back, because often when I, you know, writing bios is so hard like I find writing difficult in general I find the energy kind of stagnant I kind of need to be more in the moment like this just having a conversation just letting it flow where I can just kind of be out of my own way so when I hear things back like that sometimes I write things when I'm in a flow and then when I hear back I'm like oh okay <laughs> that's who I am yeah. it's just yeah it's just kind of funny because I'm like yeah that is the truth but again like everything because you know we live in this 3d world as well we often forget you know we forget the bigger picture we get disconnected from you know like you mentioned in the intro there as well from everything that's so much bigger than us and it's been my experience in my life you know throughout my life like I said there as well now looking back because it's been a journey and it's a constant journey and now I feel like I'm really beginning the journey because I've got to this place of awakening and what I mean by awakening is I am fully alert I'm fully present I'm fully conscious I am in my body and I'm living moment to moment like there is no such thing as the future there is no such thing as the past for want of a better word either it's only now you know the rest can be seen as an illusion so it's really kind of dipping into that and trusting and allowing and opening up to what is showing up for me what do i need to learn from it and what other layers do i need to remove from within myself because again every time something presents it's it's something within myself that i need to look at so if someone is, you know, because it's easy for us to look externally and to blame, and I suppose that's the way we're often taught and conditioned by society to look that way. But actually now, when you kind of wake up, you're like, 
sugar, I can't look externally anymore and blame because, you know, I need to look at, well, what is it in the first place within me? What is, what wound or what, you know, difficulty is there that I haven't let look yet looked at that someone's words or actions are affecting me so anyway I suppose that's a kind of where I've got to now but yeah looking back on my journey it's like that I, I've always been highly intuitive and I suppose from a very young age I kind of started an inner journey and I always felt a sense of now I can say living between two worlds because I never really felt like I fitted in to society for want of a better word you know I was like the black sheep I always thought a little bit differently I didn't buy stuff that was just fed to us like you know because everyone did it I'd be like well why why do I need to do that like it makes no sense to me and I suppose that was a lot of it was like a lot of common sense I remember having conversations you know with my parents and my mother and I'd be like but why? Like, why? It doesn't compute in my head why I need to do this because this is the way it's always been done. But again, that's not to say, now I can say I was in tune, but that's not to say that I knew at that time. Because again, I questioned going, well, why don't I fit in? What's wrong with me? Why don't I want what everyone else wants? And how do I find my place? So yeah, I suppose, but yet there was always something guiding me again. Now, when I look back, like when I was making, you know, big decisions, I always felt drawn in another direction, something, you know, that maybe most people weren't doing at the time. And although I had those fears and the, the you know, chattering mind and voice in my head going, you're crazy, you're mad, this is stupid, this is ridiculous, like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to get killed or whatever when I was heading off traveling. Again, there was something within me that I just knew even despite those fears, I was like, I just, I, I know somewhere within me, it's, it's true and it's right for me. So I suppose my whole life has been that constant following, testing. I, now I'm like, I, I'm a scientist. I am my own experiment and life is my lab. And I've been tweaking and, you know, following and facing, well, I didn't face challenges for so long. I, I ran and hid and you know, got buried in it, which is all part of the journey. But until it came a time where I was like, oh, this is exhausting. Like it's actually more difficult to live against myself and not allow my true expression and the things that I believe and this higher connection to actually live through me and to just be me, essentially. So I don't, I don't really know if that gives you yeah, much a great advantage, discourse. but that's like... <laughs> That's like, you know, start to finish, like where I'm at at the moment type scenario with lots and lots and lots of challenges and difficulties and ups and downs in between because, you know, that's life. Well, you know, I think that's beautiful and I definitely have experience. I could be resonant with many of the things that you said about, you know, not understanding why I saw things that other people didn't see or I felt a certain way and other people were like, just get over it. That's how it is. And I'm like, that's, I can't because that's not right or that mm -hmm. just don't. That doesn't seem right to me. Um, you know, that inner knowing, and I've always had this like inner backstop, for example, where I just know like certain things aren't okay. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. like, for example, like I would never engage in um, like violence. Like I just wouldn't, there's an inner backstop in me that even if someone was trying to be violent with me, like I wouldn't be violent back. You know, <laughs> like, And they're mm -hmm. like, you're being a victim or you're being weak or you're, and I'm like, no, that's just not, I know that that's not how I need to show up. I'm not going to do it. Um, you know, and I think that some of us just have that and some of us are learning to have that, you know, <laughs> like we're yeah. learning to have it. That's but I think when, and just not to cut in, but yeah, I, I can agree with that as well, because again, we were always fed challenges along the way. And, you know, I suppose a lot of times we're often taught to fight violence with violence, fight hate with hate. Like if someone gives it to you, we'll give it back to them. And again, like you were just saying there for me as well I always chose a different vibration again now looking back I can see and even now more so I'm like well no I, I choose to send the light all the time because again you know I suppose where I got to in my awakening as well you know there is that soul connection like my soul is living through this 3d physical body like this is the, the vessel, the channel I get to communicate and interface with on this 3D level. So it is my soul, my essence that is living through me. And, you know, it's, 
it's reaching for that all the time and not kind of getting stuck and that's the higher vibrations as opposed to getting stuck in the lower denser vibrations but again we're constantly transforming and transmuting you know when you think about all our ancestors and where we came from and all the violence and hate and rage and rape and pillage you know from back in the days yes it still exists because it still exists in the collective but still we have an individual choice to choose better and to you know, make a better decision in how we choose to deal with these things. Yeah. And when you start to deal with things in a more proactive way, or you uh, resist the cultural norms and you do things your own way, you know, you, you end up being um, an example for others, but also there's, it creates a little, like a little wall because there's like something in people that doesn't want to face the thing that Mm -hmm. they're doing. That's really not so bueno, you know, like they want to, they don't want to face that thing. That's not bueno. You know, they want to keep doing it. And then once you know better, you have to do better. And I think everybody innately understands that game that the divine plays with us. You know, once you know better, you got to do better. So it's sort of like people are like, la, 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 you know, like I don't see it. I don't know, but you know, but you can't only play that game so long. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't, and it's my belief anyway, that, you know, because when we're born as well, we're all born the same, of the same potentiality, the same high vibration, like pure unconditional love, like pure consciousness, when you think of any child. And any single one of us has the potentiality, you know, along a spectrum to be the most incredible person in the world, like the most saintly person, or the most murderous, violent person, whatever. I believe we all have that potentiality. And again, it's life and circumstances and situations and different things that, you know, cloud us. But I still believe that that soul is still there. And whenever someone is manifesting externally, you know, violence or hatred or rage or, you know, any of these, um, this darkness, it's because of, you know, subconscious patterns and limited beliefs you know, within themselves that I believe at the time they don't consciously know or aren't aware of. Because again, even myself, once I started looking inwards, I was like, oh my God, because we just were always looking externally. So we go to blame going, well, it's because I live in this rough neighborhood that I have to stand up for myself, which is an absolute reality. You know, that is the reality but still we can always make better choices. And once we start that inner journey and looking and learning and releasing ourselves from possibly old limitations and conditioning that we needed when we were younger to survive, literally sometimes it is, um, you know, that level of survival, but then eventually these things we carry for too long and they become a hindrance in our life and they actually hold us back as opposed to moving us forward. And that's when we need to start delaying and going within and finding the truth and connecting back to that truth of who we are, who I believe is always there. It can be the teeniest, tiniest little flicker, but it is absolutely always there, but it is our choice. And it's a scary choice as well, because it means completely changing the way you've been operating so far for the most part you know and that's scary facing some of those truths and seeing going oh god i really messed up here i didn't make the best decision here like oh i could have done better here because that's the reality it's an acceptance but a reintegration and having that compassion for ourselves in order to allow ourselves to to move forward in a better direction yeah i totally agree and it's not just you know it's not just from a place of i think and i see and i want to change Sometimes um, what I learned on my journey is that there's actually energy and um, subconscious things like you were talking about in your body, in your mind, mm-hmm. in your DNA, in the vessel that you walk around in that is is like preventing you from making the choice that inside you know is right. It's actually mm-hmm. like this blockade of doing the right thing that you walk around in depending on your conditioning and depending on what family you were born into and depending on how your early childhood domesticated your brain, that there's a lot of factors, but you know, you have to realize at some point that, um, you know, you can't just think your way out of it, which is why I think psychology Mm -hmm. doesn't have the whole picture, like Western psychology, because they try to do it from the mind, Yeah, but there's so much more. And when I had my first healing is when I realized it because he took energy out of me that was like shame that got placed there when I was like one. Remember I talked to you about yeah, that? Yeah. And as soon as that was gone, Karen, I could make progress. 
Yeah. I could make progress. I had 20 years of psychotherapy, couldn't make progress. He took that energy out. I, all the knowledge came in and I was like, yes, now I know. Yeah. Well, it's like that, you know, reintegration and looking at ourselves and empowering ourselves again to know. I know for me as well, at times it was like, oh my God, I have a choice, which I hadn't realized before as well. And I know in my own journey, I kind of didn't like that. I've always been really interested in energy work from a very young age. I remember a lady came into our school. I think when I was about 15 and she spoke about kinesiology and she did a few tests like muscle testing and, you know, asking different questions of, you know, if her body was dehydrated or whatever, without actually having to vocalize and say things. And I remember instantly then my mind was blown because I was like, whoa, she is getting all this information from a body, from where she senses in heaviness or density or darkness or stagnation in our energy flow, because we're all energy. We're, we're just an energy of vibration and frequency. So um, the fact that without even opening her mouth, the girl that she was doing little samples on was like fun, you know, just informative little class. I remember then I was like, whoa, my mind was blown to me. Something connected there and then that I was like, I know there is truth in energy and working with the energy body. And I suppose I knew then as well that I would work in energy work in some way, shape or form. But obviously at that age, I thought I'd be like way older. I knew it wouldn't be my first career, even though I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew it wouldn't be a first career. Um, and I thought then it'd be like when I was in my 50s, 60s or something, but you know, it's happened now. But that was always something whenever I felt stuck or in a rush or challenged or like just in a funk at a crossroads, like just feeling low, not really sure what to do. I was always drawn to some form of energy work, you know, be it Reiki, reflexology, bioenergy, angel healing, like there's so many of them. I was always drawn to that. And now I can see as well just how powerful that work is. Because again, like you say, we carry things, but not even from, yes, so much from our childhoods and all that as well, but actually ancestrally, generationally as well, that we're completely clueless of. Like, because it's all the same continuum. Everything has been passed down. And I don't know if you've ever done family constellation work. Oh, yes, I have. I have a good friend, Gary Stewart, who does that. It's amazing. It is the most <laughs> mind-blowing work as it well. Is. Because when I was there and, you know, doing different constellations of different people's families, and then when you go back generations, see what they went through. Like, if someone is died young or murdered or like in Ireland, you know, if they had a baby out of wedlock and were kind of shoved out of the family and all these different things, they all play a part. They leave holes in our system and that kind of energy and trauma is passed down to individuals. So like, oh, it's just fascinating. So it's like, oh my God, we're so clueless. We can't even deal with our own stuff because there's so much stuff coming down the line with us. And I think that's what's powerful about family constellation work as well. You know, the lady the facilitator who was doing with us, it was like, we get to hand back the trauma that was there. It's like, it's healed. You know, the, the, the system is healed or whatnot. So then we can take our own piece and begin to deal with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and it's, and you can also, if you get skilled enough in the energy work, you can, um, you can bring, you can send energy healing down the line to your ancestors. So yeah. I've been doing that, like um, healing anything within myself and, and letting that healing ripple back, you know, Completely. through time to my ancestry, particularly starting with my mom, right? <laughs> like that's healing yeah. and my natural father, because he had a lot of things that he also needed healing with that lineage needed healing. And why do we want to do it? Well, sometimes, you know, the thing is, um, in the, it's my understanding and tell me what you, what you know about this, but it's my understanding that your, your blood ancestry actually can be a huge supportive for you in your lifetime in mm. terms of giving you love, encouragement, they're sharing their gifts with you. But if you sort of like energetically severed that connection because of your relationship with like, say an immediate parent, mm -hmm. it like cuts off some of the energy there. And it's so yeah. I've actually had to bypass like, cause she doesn't want to connect. It's just her mindset is just not um, this way. And so I've like kind of gone around her and gone and connected back like several generations back to my Cherokee ancestors, you know, like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go all the way back here and <laughs> hop over her and reconnect there. Like, so you can also sort of like, um, make your own connections, the ancestral sort of support you 
and making yeah. connections to the ones that can be very supportive for you in this lifetime. So that's what I've done in order to connect my indigenous roots. Yeah, um, absolutely. And working with my ancestors, like I came across a quote, I don't know who it was or who said it or whatever, but it was like, I am my ancestors living dream. All of us are. All of us are ancestors living dream. And I just was like, um, I nearly started crying when I came across it. I'm like, that is such a privilege. And doing family constellation work and everything. And I just went because it was like a curiosity to me. It was coming up for me. And again, that's the journey. You know, these things just pop in and you just follow. I had no idea what it entailed, what, how it worked, what it was even. But I was like, oh, this is calling me. I'll just go do it. And it was just fascinating. Mm. And I consider myself so privileged that I got to do that work as well for my family system. And again, it's, we don't even need to know sometimes as well. It's just that trust and knowing that that healing has been done. And yeah, I just consider it such a privilege and I completely connect with my ancestors the whole time now, uh, really strongly. And all of them, I don't even know who they all are, but I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I connect with you all and I allow their energy to flow through me. And I also believe though as well, we don't even need to be skilled in energy work or anything. It's up to all of us individually. It's just that thought. It's a decision. Every time, yeah, every time we have an intention to send healing, we don't have to be skilled. Energy travels, everything is energy. We're all energy. Everything well, you, around us is energy. So we can just choose to say the words, I send love and light to all the hospitals around the world to places where there's violence and war and struggles, you know, to my community and that energy, that intention travels. And there's been so many studies done around, you know, war places and everything as well. And groups of meditators go in and just start meditating and how the energy and the vibration of the whole situation changes. And the same with people in hospital who are prayed for, whether they know they're prayed for or not, how it can help speed up their recovery. They have less complications. So, no, we all have that immense, immense power within us. We don't need anything. We don't need to be skilled in any single tool or energy work or anything. We just send it. We choose to send that love and light and that high vibration and it's done. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's a matter of making an inner decision. You know, it's an inner decision that you're going to be part, like you, I love that you said, um, I allow my ancestors to flow through me. That's a decision that you made. Mm -hmm. because what they were showing me when you were talking was that there's like, it's like a river, right? So in my oh, case, <laughs> in my case, there's a river and directly behind me with my mom, there's a little like a little dam in the river, right? Like there's a little stuck spot. So mm -hmm. that's fine. The river can flow around that, you know, it can flow around that and come exactly. through me until she's ready to like unblock her own little mm -hmm. piece of the river, right? Which yeah. she not be ready to do anytime soon. So that's fine. It can be blocked but then it can go around. So it's your, it's your invitation. And I like to say, um, you know, that I invite my ancestors, I invite my heal, you know, the healed aspects of my ancestors to become my strengths, you know, like mm -hmm. I invite their strengths to become my strengths. And I invite them to, you know, liberate me from <laughs> their suffering and their weaknesses and their things yeah. that, you know, that were problematic, that they see, and maybe it wasn't problematic for them. Maybe it's only problematic for me now because I've entered a new age and those things don't really serve me anymore. So like I can work with my ancestors too, to be like, Hey, this thing is really stopping up the works. Can you help me with this? Because it doesn't work for me now in the, you yeah. know, your 2020 coming up, you know, doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> I need some support. So they'll yeah. do that too. Absolutely. And like that, I mean, it's just, it's just giving thanks for me as well. It's just knowing and I just close my eyes and I just feel like their support or their hands are there. Like they just got my back. Like I would not be here if it were not for all my ancestors. So yeah, it's just gratitude and giving thanks and just feeling and trusting the support as well. Yeah. And trusting and leaning back into that support. I think we have a lot of family systems that um, have gotten a little broken, at least in Western culture, in the United States particularly. I don't know what it's like in Ireland, but yeah, no, we have a lot of broken family systems with divorce and things like that. And that is very challenging to keep that, you know, that sense of like, oh, my ancestors have my back or, oh, my family has my back. My family loves me. That's hard to keep that going when you've got these broken families, you know, these, mm. these arguments and these things that disrupt the river. 
So yeah. you got to reconnect that. Yeah. And everything, you know, from where I've come to my journey as well, and the simplest, you know, piece of information that I can share with anyone and that I have to constantly keep reminding myself as well is just if something is not working, if something is not serving us, no matter what it is, you know, I don't have to keep searching or digging or going back or asking whatever. At the end of the day, it's as simple as, I just need to make a better choice. I just need to shift my focus to something different. Because again, our focus, we only have one point of focus, that is our attention. So if I'm constantly focused on the what's not working and the pain and the strife and the struggle and what's lacking and how I'm feeling victimized or whatever it is that a person is feeling, well, that's where all my attention and energy is going. So it's like, yes, I can go down as many roads and get as much support and ask as many people or ancestors or help or whatever, which is fine. I'm not saying there's absolutely anything wrong with that because I've done that and I still continue to work with mentors and energy work and everything. And I love it. But also I know we don't need any of it. We have the power to just decide. We just decide and we do something different. We shift our focus to, well, what do I want? What do I want to feel instead? And just start putting our energy on that place instead and allowing to see what shows up, what unfolds, what's coming across our path that it's like, ooh, maybe I can explore this. So. Yeah, for me, I feel like, <laughs> I, yeah, that's really good. I feel like it's been, um, you know, I've had a lot of lessons around spiritual bypass and, um, you know, if we don't sort of clear out, uh, something that's stuck in our being, we can st keep operating from that way. sort of like it's saran wrapped inside mm -hmm. of us, like a little, like almost like an infection, you know, when you get something like a, something stuck inside of you, that's not supposed to be there and your body encapsulates it says, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm just going to like encapsulate that thing and let yeah. it be a thing. So we do, it's a tricky ground though. I like what you're saying. Cause it's very true. <laughs> your attention can get super hooked on the problem rather than what do I want? You know, what do I want? What state of being do I want to be in? And you can yeah. be in a new state of being like very quickly when you choose, right? So like, for example, I love you talk about gratitude. Like being in a state of mm -hmm. gratitude is super important. When you're in that state and that state of being, then you're focused on the thing that you're, that you're wanting to like, sort of like, um, you know, take that little bubble of, of stuck energy or whatever out of there, right? Like shift mm -hmm. it out and have a resolution to it because resolution is super important too to moving forward. Like we got to yeah. have resolution. So it maybe it's a resolution you invent within yourself because you have a new perspective, but you have to be able to come to closure on things in your own psychology to really truly forgive it and let it go. So if the energy is encapsulated in there and stuck, it's not going to move anywhere. It's going to still be there until you're ready to deal with it. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. <laughs> and again, that's why the journey is inwards like and this. that's why there's no point looking <laughs> out. yeah there's no point looking externally and looking right. to blame and looking for solutions as well I mean yes support but ultimately we have to go within we have to start asking ourselves the self-inquiry questions of why is this constantly showing up why am I feeling this way why is this pattern repeating constantly why am I changing you know seemingly doing all the right things i'm changing my job i'm changing my country i'm changing relationship i'm changing my car i'm changing whatever and everywhere but i go why, there i am <laughs> exactly but why do i still feel this hurt resentment yeah. shame whatever it is and that is because we haven't gone inwards because like we've been talking about as well there are things resonating subconsciously in our energetic field that we need to go through. I tried for so long to go around, to go above, to go under. I was like, what? I, I energy remember medicine, all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah, I remember a few years ago though, and it just happened to me all of a sudden. It was just, and this is the thing, when you're on a spiritual path or a mystical path or just living in your truth and that connection, it can happen at any stage that you have an insight or a moment or whatever. And I remember I was just in my room one day and all of a sudden, I just got this real presence or sense of this. I could see this, like it looked like an old Irish treasure chest and it was like resonating in my energy field. And I was told open that. And I was like, hell no, 
uh, like I did not I did not know what is locked in there I was like there is no way I'm opening that and it was in relation to like a, a, an event as when I was a child and I was like why is this coming up like this is so dealt with like this doesn't even enter my mind like why am I being shown this and I was like nope at first I was like now this was I was just walking around my room just all of a sudden and I was like nope not opening that because I was like I don't know what's in that box like if I open that Pandora's box, I don't know what's going to come out. But then anyway, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, anyway, I opened it. And when I opened it, I unlocked these emotions of shame and guilt that I was carrying. And I was like, shit, I had no idea. I had no idea that that is what I had been carrying my whole life. And again, it comes up when you're ready. You know, because yeah, that exactly. was my you can't time. Force the that was out. my yeah. That was my time to yeah. open that box, but I didn't want to do it because again, the fears in your head, our minds make it out to be a million times worse or crazy or scarier than it actually is. And the minute I opened that box and realized that these were the hidden emotions that I thought I dealt with, but they were still resonating. They were still an imprint somewhere in my energetic field that it was ready for me to look at. And the minute I did that, nothing has been the same since. I've completely freed myself. And actually the universe has a great sense of humor. I'm laughing going, how the hell was I carrying that for so long? Like, it, what? like it meant no sense. And so many of us, we all have limiting subconscious beliefs. And for a lot of women as well, it is around shame. It is around not feeling good enough, not worthy and all these different things. But again, until we start the inner work and we unlock ourselves and release that, it's just like, like nothing else would do it. That's why, you know, it is that inward journey. It is all that self-exploration, self-inquiry, like asking ourselves the right question, trusting, following what's showing up for us, no matter how crazy it seems to be. That is our truth. That is our essence. That is our soul bringing us back to our light. But we can't get back there unless we show up, unless we do the work, unless we move out of our own way and go through what's been shown up for us, which, like I say, seemed terrifying absolutely terrified but it's actually not once we do it and we do it again and again and again that fear always shows up but fear is natural fear is not to be scared of you know now it's like when I feel that fear I'm like sugar I know this is something I need to do <laughs> you know but that's good you welcome yeah. it and it's showing you the way fear shows us the way um, when we're doing the inner work and yeah it's literally the only work like it's the only work to be doing. doing yeah in our yeah, lifetime totally true. it is the work but it is and the i want to say work. like once you it's kind of like taking a red pill in the matrix you know once you're in you're sort of in you know there's yeah. no going back and inserting yourself and being unconscious absolutely not no. <laughs> so <laughs> that is which again awesome. Which again has its struggles sometimes because I'm like, yeah. oh man, some days I'm like, no, I just want to be pissed off and I just want to blame that person and I just want to whatever. I just want to break. And then you can't because you know there's something there for you. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I do and I have my moment because again, I suppose being awake now as well, whereas before I used to suppress or deny or run or not face things. Now I absolutely face them because that's the journey of being awake. You absolutely embrace and face everything because we're here to experience experience life we're here to have this 3d physical reality which means all of it all of it we can't pick and choose you know yes we can change when we change our vibration and choose to vibe higher things that used to challenge us before don't challenge us anymore and we get better things you know coming to us but it doesn't mean we're immune from difficulties because that's again how we grow. That's how we learn. That's how we evolve. We're sent these challenges to help us rise, transcend, to learn something new about ourselves, to let go of another limit, a belief, a crazy mindset, so we can connect more. Um, yeah, it's kind of like some of those things that the difficult moments are actually realignments to a better configuration. It's just that we're attached mm -hmm. to the old configuration because it was comfortable and familiar. Yeah. But like if you allow it to happen and you get over yourself thinking it's the wrong thing or it's bad or it's awful because it doesn't feel good, well, mm -hmm. then on the other side, you're like, of course I needed to go through that. Mm -hmm. Of course I needed to have that experience because now I have new skills, new resiliency, 
things are in a better yeah. alignment. I'm not so codependent or whatever yeah. it is, you know, like I have more freedom that I didn't know was possible, you know? So usually it's a something I didn't know this state was possible to have. Yeah. This realigned me to the thing I didn't know was possible. And now yeah. that I have the thing I didn't know was possible, it's pretty great. So I'm happy yeah. now. You know, but it's and a little journey of like the resistance, but you're changing totally. my thing that I, you know, I like to call it dirty blankie, like from your childhood, but you're trying to take my blankie and I want to keep it. And so it's yeah. like, I want to give you a castle and you're complaining about your blankie, you know? Like, yeah. And that's <laughs> totally it. And like, it is a journey as well, because again, you know, when I think about it, like everywhere around us, there are everyday heroes. I've spoken to so many as well in my podcast who have been through the most seemingly horrific times, like abuse, horrific loss, you know, losing children, um, illness, disease, like these things are realities. Yes, they exist. But again, all those people, they're doing the most incredible work. They're still choosing light. They are so grateful that they had that experience. And this doesn't happen overnight you know, just heads up for everyone. This doesn't happen overnight. But you meet these everyday heroes within our communities and online doing incredible work that have been through the most seemingly horrific challenges. But yet, they're spreading the light. They're sharing their gifts because we're all here to help. We're all here to serve. And if we can help someone else, you know, from being in a position or getting out of something, well, you know, even better. And I just think it's so inspiring and so incredible that, you know, these people are here and they would say as well that they're only doing what they're doing and they're only the person they are because of X, Y, and Z. And I mean, you know, even when they get to that point, they're like, Sometimes I've had you know, people, they're like, this is crazy to speak about because for so many years I fought against it. I denied, I questioned why me, life is so cruel. This is so difficult. How can God or the universe or whatever be so horrible? But there's always a reason. And that's what I've discovered as well on a soul level. We don't know what our soul is discovering through any challenge that shows up in our 3D world. And we also don't know what that soul, no matter how long or short they're here for, what that soul came here to teach. And again, that's the inner journey. And for me, everything starts with acceptance. Because as long as yeah. we're not accepting, and again, it's fine because we deal with things the way we need to deal with them at the time. If we can't accept and we need to deny and we need to throw ourselves into work or whatever, that's what we need to do at that time. But again, like we mentioned earlier, they will come up at some stage to be looked at. And that's when we need to step beyond our comfort zone. That's when we need to accept and start digging deeper. And that's where a lot of us get stuck. And like you say, we it's that dirty blankie. We get so attached to our sadness or fear or depression or anger or grief that actually we prefer to hold on to that than stepping into the unknown because in a strange way it offers us a comfort it offer it meets needs for us and you know that's I suppose that the dif difficulty is knowing when enough is enough and it's when we need to make that decision be like okay I need to start letting go of this and reaching for something new yeah opening up to your soul's guidance on that new thing mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a process I've experienced where it's layer by layer, like, I'm, you know, let go of this relationship with your son, the way that you mm -hmm. thought it was going to be and let something new come in. Let go of your relation, you know, your father who died, like, let go of that and step into the new configuration. Yeah. Let go, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, wow, I'm constantly being called up to the next thing. And yeah, it's, it's been a very intense journey over the last eight years. And it's been fast for me. Not everybody has such an intense journey, but oh, man. I guess, <laughs> you know, it's just, I signed up for it. So yeah, it is I, how it is for it everyone, is how it's how meant it to is. be. <laughs> it is how it is. Some of us wake yeah. up quick and some of us have our whole lifetimes and we sort of know and everybody else is sort of like, I mean, I, I get why people are unconscious because I was unconscious for a good part of my life. I totally so understand I. that, you know, like yeah. I get it. I get the earth amnesia. And yeah. I can't even imagine how some people who've been awake since they were born put up with all of us unconscious people walking around the planet. Like they've <laughs> got to be like, when are they going to wake up? And you can't tell people to wake up. That's what I've no. realized no. is like the more you try to like 
get certain people to wake up almost like they dig their heels in even more like yeah we can't so you yeah, just we can't, can't. <laughs> we can't make they're ready you can't do anything yeah. about it but that's that's a really valid point because although I always felt you know that juxtaposition like I always felt like there's something more there's more meaning to just you know what we're being sold and whatnot and I really struggled you know even <laughs> well going back a couple of years where I was really kind of more awake and I was like I was looking around going oh my god I actually don't know who has lost their mind is it me or is it everyone else I'm like everyone why is everyone just looks like sheep or robots and like doing the exact same thing well, and I was like I, I actually don't know who who has lost their mind here or if there's such a thing but again you just keep honoring yourself I kept just digging into me and go well what feels right for me I know how I used to live I know how it was like you know in that because I did the nine to five grind and it literally I was like it's not for me it sucks the soul out of me I'm like yeah I have money I can you know buy things or whatever but they don't fill me up and I'm like my big thing was time I'm like I don't have time to experience the different things because all this feckin' work and money and you know consumerism whatever so it is a real challenge and at times I've questioned going oh my god have I done myself more not now now I'm like fully awake I'm in my flow I'm like no I've broken through all those limits I mean there might be moments but again I remember back and I'm like no never go back all the money in the world you couldn't give it to me but there were moments where I was like oh, have I done myself more of a disservice actually maybe I might have been better off fast asleep because then I wouldn't have yeah, because this journey is pretty challenging. <laughs> have gone through that, but then I'm like, no, because that's not no. my path. And again, it's just digging into me and always seeing what lights me up and who do I want to be and who do I want to become and what is my truth and reaching for that all the time. And I, I, I did go through a phase of well as, uh, of trying to convince and be like, oh my god, but you have to with this, that, whereas now. And again, that was my own inner journey. Still, I hadn't come to a full place of acceptance of who I am and the truth of who I am and everything and getting comfortable with that flowing out of me all the time that now that I'm there I'm just like yeah whatever each to their own and through my work you know I try to be that mirror for someone to help them see the truth of themselves and as much as some days I just want to wave a magic wand and be like please please just choose better for yourself or do the work because the only limit is ourselves the only limit is ourselves and the limits we put on ourselves but I can't I can only just be there in holding space and full presence and light and compassion and love and just I believe in you so you're worth it like do the work honor yourself cherish yourself and I suppose that's you know some of my work that I really prefer is that relationship with ourselves because even now when I look back I spoke against myself so badly. Like I was so hard on myself. I was so rigid on myself. I had this idea of perfectionism that, oh my God, now when I look back, I was like, Jesus. Like, and it's so destructive. It is so destructive. But the it thing really about is. it is, the thing about it is, I didn't realize it was destructive. I actually thought I was helping myself. I thought in a weird way, the way I was talking to myself was actually helping me and moving me forward and trying to make myself better. Whereas it was totally counterintuitive. Yes, we can always help ourselves develop a better relationship, but it's through my words by destroying myself going, Oh, you're so stupid. You should have done this. Why did you say that? That was so ridiculous. That's counterproductive. Whereas I can be like, okay, maybe I mightn't have said what was in my heart, but next time I can try say this. Like it's just having that more nurturing, compassionate. on side, compassionate, like you would talk to a best friend. And that's been yeah. one of the biggest shifts that I have made for myself as well is I'm my best friend. I actually totally and utterly honor and respect and nurture and care for my body now and my mind and my soul and my spirit and my energy and what I feed myself and how I think about myself and how I talk to myself and that is the biggest game changer ever and that's what I want to help other women with now through my work as well especially like yeah, tell us tell us more about the work that you do and how do people get started finding out more about that yeah well um so 
I suppose, like I mentioned, the energy work has always been huge for me. I always knew I would do something in that. Now my own journey, it has been, now I can say saving grace. Like, honestly, I don't even know what it saved me from because every time I felt that, and because we're all energy, you know, we don't need to know as well what's been cleared sometimes or what, what's been shifted. But I absolutely know every time that those blockages were removed helped me a little bit more to go, okay, right. I can move forward again. So I love energy work and I do IET, which is integrated energy work and or integrated energy therapy and Reiki and Seiki. So for me, all energy work is essentially, they're all along a similar vein. It's about unblocking blockages within our bodies so we can flow freely again. Because again, we are all energy. And whenever something is blocked or stagnant or dense or heavy, we are not fully in alignment. And I suppose we vibrate lower as well. So then different things are, the lower our energy is and the denser it is, well, you know, the more difficult and trudging life can be. We're like, kind of like a walking against the mud or something like that. Whereas when we can clear, our channel is essentially clear that we can recognize and vibe higher. So there's that, but also then I do, I do coaching mainly with women um, and whole circles as well. And again, for me, the coaching is really about developing that relationship, helping women just to see the truth of who they are and how valuable and worthy and incredible they are and how, you know, again, uncovering those limiting blocks that we don't need to carry anymore and just becoming on side with ourselves. Because again, at the end of the day, Yes, we interact with loads of people and with family and friends and partners or children or whatever, but we are honestly the only person we are ever guaranteed for our whole entire life. And I had that realization through a really traumatic breakup, but it was like, shit, yeah, like, oh my God, I am the only person I'm guaranteed for my whole entire life. And that wasn't scary or isolating or lonely. I'm like, that is really empowering because I get to choose. I get to choose irrespective of what's going on on the outside. And I don't need any person or anything to choose who I want to be. I get to choose because I simply get to choose. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful gift to give to other women to realize oh, that. Step out of that code of honesty. Yeah, and it was through a really, really horrific traumatic breakup. That was the biggest blessing in my life that I got that. So again, we all go through things. We all have things. We all have gifts. We all have a purpose. We all have things to share and to help another human. And, you know, for me, again, just having that relationship with ourselves is just so pivotal in the first place to then making any other changes we want in our lives. So between that and kind of do some workshops and circles, and also I have my podcast as well, Curiosity and Consciousness, which is, you know, connecting with like-minded people as well, like yourself and having people maybe share their stories of difficulties of they, they may have gone through and the incredible work they're doing as well as a result. Um, but my website as well is soulpowerlight.com um and yes yeah, so that's kind of gorgeous yeah well where i'm at and loads of ideas and things coming a, yeah through, you can see like... the energy bubbling up you know <laughs> we're excited that's the thing i it's love about really this work exciting. is i get excited like that too like i yeah. i have my moments where i'm like oh, i'm tired right now uh you know totally. but then i like i get re-inspired and then it's like most of most of my life is pretty, you know, excited about whatever I'm working on next for my soul project, you know, so it's Completely. fun. And like you say, there are those times as well still. I mean, it's like I've said before, it's not as if I'm immune or I never feel down or sad or things, but now I don't run from them, like I said before. So, and even now, like I, I've, I'm so in tune even with nature, like we are nature. Like even last month, I was like feeling exhausted and I kept pushing myself and I was like, cause I forgot again, you know, to tune in. And I was like, oh my God, I have to get this done and blah, blah. And then I was just like, when I tuned in with myself, I was like, oh my God, like, you know, it was my time a month in two days time. And I was like, oh, no wonder I'm feeling extra tired. My initial thing was, what's wrong with me? Why, why am I feeling so like lethargic or whatever? And then it's like remembering going, oh yeah, just ease up off myself a little bit. Yeah. Okay. What is priority? Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Do those. What's not priority? Just maybe give myself 
a half an hour, an hour, you know, yeah, the afternoon rest. if I can. Block off your yeah. calendar. Believe me, I've been blocking off my calendar. I'm like, okay, I'm blocking all this time so I can have some time for myself. Yeah, to but it's rest. vital. Because yeah, it's my it's midway, fine. it's my winter. So like, you know, like we all, like when we're born, we have that like midline where we're like in our, like when we're born, we're in our sun and then our midline, we're in the darkness. And that's the time you're supposed to be hibernating. And mm -hmm. mine is coming up December 26th, you know, so like. Well, even in I'm, general, you know, leaning winter in, is. We're recording yeah. this way ahead of when we're going to actually broadcast this show. We're going to broadcast the show <laughs> like in the Good early woman, morning. You're ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> So, well, awesome. This has been a great conversation. I knew it would be. So thank you so much for coming on the thank show you. and sharing your wisdom. I just want to encourage everybody out there to go ahead and like and subscribe to Karen's um, podcast, Curiosity and Consciousness. We'll put a link in there. And, uh, you know, it's important to like and subscribe and comment because that's how these, like, you know, internet engines uh, <laughs> make sure that other people see the good stuff, you know, is because yeah. somebody's liked and subscribed and all that kind of stuff. And, of course, do that for Soul Nectar Show as well. You know, like and subscribe and share it out with other people. If you like an episode, give a comment on YouTube or on iTunes and share out the episode. It's really great. Thank you for doing that. And now I like to give kisses on the way out. Would you like to join me in giving everybody kisses? Absolutely. Okay, well, here are the kisses, people. <laughs> love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week on Soul Nectar Show. Bye for now. Bye.